What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a trading update as well, talking about what I ended up doing today on the 24th of May in terms of my trades. Did I do any day trading, swing trading, profits, losses? We're going to be talking about that in today's video, but before we do get into the topic of today's video, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, all I ask is to go down below and hit that like button. Just gently hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're actually new to the channel, I have two links down below in the description box for you if you want to be further connected with our community. One of them being the Strive Smart Discord group chat, and the other one being the Strive Smart Facebook group. Get in there, bunch of valuable information, bunch of valuable people. It's great. So let's just get right into the topic of today's video, starting off here with the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies, ticker symbol SPX. We ended up closing the day up $3.82 today, up 0.14%. So not crazy, uh, not much crazy movement in the S&P 500 in terms of this closing price. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up a bit more than the S&P, up $95, up 0.37% at the close. And the NQ is currently up around $1.50 right now. This is the NASDAQ. But if we're going over here to the one day, one minute very quickly... So we can see where it ended up closing. It ended up closing about five points below from where we are now. So if my calculations are correct, the NASDAQ actually closed a bit in the red today. So overall, just based off of those closing prices, guys, the markets were kind of boring today. And if you all were paying attention to the markets today, actually, um, they were up a bit more towards the beginning of the day, and then they started to taper off. Take a look here on the S&P 500. We actually gapped up pretty heavily today, actually, to about 28.41. That was about a 20-point gap up from yesterday's close. Then we ended up selling off to about 28.20, which happens to be one of the resistance levels from yesterday. We ended up holding that level as a new support, popped back up, and then kind of tapered off from the middle of the day into the close of the market. So let's hop to these longer-term charts. Let's break down the markets right now. What am I personally seeing in in terms of technicals, where could we be headed after this long weekend? And for those of you guys that don't know, Monday, the market is closed. It's Memorial Day, so we'll be having a four-day week next week. Just throwing that out there for everybody that, or anybody rather, that might not know. So let's just talk uh, talk about this very quickly. We're noticing, like I've been mentioning over the past couple of videos, the S&P right now is maintaining the $2,800 level of support here, which was an old resistance from a couple of months ago. We broke the 180 SMA support here on the 184-hour chart. Very bad sign in my personal opinion. And now, based off of what ended up happening today, we're actually seeing a red candlestick forming under the 180 SMA because again we broke that level of support and now we're fighting to get above it and it's acting as a resistance and we're seeing this red candlestick right here so this is telling me that this is a pretty strong resistance especially if we go back to the one day one minute we can see you know once we popped up this morning at 2841, that's pretty much where we tested that the, the 180 SMA resistance on the longer term chart. And you guys can see the strong rejection from that level, and we failed to get out of that level um, er, uh, later on in the day. And if we just go back to the 184 hour, you guys can see the rejection was pretty much at 2835, 2840, that rough level that we were at in the morning, and we ended up selling off. So if we're looking on a closer term basis here on the 20 day one hour, we're noticing what the rejection today and the sell off that we saw following um, yesterday's strong sell off and the sell off that we saw more towards the end of the market today. This is looking like a third lower high for the S&P 500. The descending pattern is still looking intact. And from what I'm seeing, especially if we break 2800 here, the level of support drawn out by this trend line, 
I think there's going to be much more selling, right? If we end up breaking this level to the downside and we get into the $2,700 level, at that point, we'll be pushing to a lower low and just continuing the downwards trending pattern. So the first high at $2,950, that was the all-time high. Second high at about $2,890. And if this is the third high, 2830 and we break 20 into 2700 that's just going to be the confirming fact in my opinion factor rather um of of the S&P selling off quite frankly more than it has already so you know judging on the 5 day 5 minute we'll see more of the same right we got rejected here by the 180 SMA we got rejected later in the day again. We ended up closing under the resistance. It wasn't looking too great in terms of us breaking out here. So let's talk about the Dow Jones Industrial Average very quickly. You know, judging on the five-day, five-minute chart right here, we're noticing how this one's actually slightly breaking out compared to the S&P 500. You know, if we're going to the 20-day, 20-day, one-hour chart here, we're noticing, you know, the Dow is also in the process of making that potential lower high. Take a look. The, the high here at about 26,700, the second high at about 25,900, and now if this is the third high, you know, this is at about 25,500, and we may be selling off from here, especially if we get that full-on rejection by this 50 simple moving average resistance here on the 20-day, one-hour chart. So going over to the 184-hour chart, we're actually back into the 25,500 level uh, of support now. We broke out of the resistance this morning with the gap up and now we're trending and trading in between the horizontal channel of about 25,500 and 26,200 again on the Dow Jones but still like I mentioned you know the 20 day one hour chart is showing us this may be the continuation of the, of the descending pattern especially if we start to push down more on those lower time frame charts so we're just holding 25,500, guys. I think we sell off more at these levels, to be honest, just judging off of, you know, these patterns. And if we do, we'll be down and testing $25,000 flat in no time, in my opinion, um, in terms of the Dow Jones here. So judging on the NASDAQ very quickly... You know, we're noticing a lot of the same. The bearish cross here on the 184-hour chart, the lower high slowly starting to form from the previous, which was about, you know, 300 points higher from where we are right now. And it, it just looks a lot like the S&P and the, uh, the Dow, right? Like I mentioned for, for the most part, uh, you know, throughout the year, these markets kind of move in unison, right? Except for that one time, like I mentioned in a, in a couple of videos ago, where that one, uh, what was it, Boeing stock ended up dragging down the, uh, the Dow one day, and the Dow was severely red, but the S&P was green. That's, uh, that's an example of, you know, when the markets may not be um, going up or down in unison, but for the most part, you know, they're mostly moving in unison. So if we're looking here on, uh, let's take a look, maybe at 20 day, one hour, you know, again, it's a lot of the same, right? The high here at 7,800, second lower high at about 7,615. And if this is intact, this will be the fourth lower high at about 7,350. And the third one is at about 7,478. So the pattern is just descending descending, dropping, dropping, moving averages are pointing down. Everything is looking, in terms of the technicals, pointing to more selling from what I'm seeing right here. And I'm sure a bunch of you guys, just judging on these uh, charts that you're seeing on the video, will agree with that. So five day, five minute, I'm sure it's showing a lot more of the same selling off, selling off. We're noticing the start of a bearish cross here. Candlesticks are breaking below again. They're looking to head to the low of about 72.68. If that ends up getting broken beneath of, that's going to lead to more selling. So the market, guys, to be honest, ever since we had that low volume day a couple of days ago, I forget whether that was on um, Tuesday or Wednesday, but we had one of the lowest volume days in a long time in the stock market. 
And ever since that day, I feel like the markets have just been pretty weak, right? We saw the big sell-off yesterday, pretty big chunk of a sell-off. Today, we were really struggling to break out of those resistances, break into some higher territory in the markets, which is just telling me the market's pretty weak right now. I don't know if it's because the long weekend ahead. I don't know if people just you know, weren't buying, weren't trading. I don't know what's going on, guys, but the market has just been pretty funky. So let's talk about uh, what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading. You saw in the title of the video that I made a mistake today, guys. I made a mistake, and we're going to be talking about that in today's video regarding ticker symbol DRIP. So DRIP, um, this one kind of it was pretty uh, of a frustrating trade for me today because I thought I made a mistake originally and then I ended up missing out on a bunch of money, which which ends up happening sometimes, guys. You know, I can't just be a baby about it and, um, you know, just complain. But the whole point of this YouTube channel is for me to document these times so you guys can, you know, hear my, my, my thought process and maybe you guys might relate. So, Let's talk about what I ended up doing today. So we noticed the big sell-off overall on DRIP. And for those of you guys that don't know, you know, DRIP is an inverse ETF. Its inverse is GUSH, and it trades on XOP is the ticker, which is an oil and gas ETF. Whenever XOP is selling off, that is when DRIP is going up in price. And we notice here, you know, on the five-day, five-minute, XOP has been getting hammered, and DRIP has been going higher and higher and higher. And I was talking about how um, yesterday that I was getting a bit of FOMO on drip, fear of missing out. And I know I'm a bit more experienced, but just because I'm experienced, guys, doesn't mean that I don't struggle with some of these, you know, these things such as, you know, FOMO, you know, jumping into a trade too early, stuff like that. At the end of the day, you know, I'm still human too, right? I make some bad decisions. I make some stupid mistakes. And again, these videos are to document those different things. So again, yesterday I had a bit of uh, FOMO on drip and for all you guys that don't know, to give you some context, Drip's been up like 25% in literally the past two days. It was at $10 on the 22nd of May, guys, literally, and now it's up exactly 25% to the peak of $13.47. So initially here, you know, we got the pullback, like I said, down to about 12.22, and if we're just looking at the moving average here, that was actually a pretty healthy pullback. It brought the RSI down. It bounced on a higher low. So everything at this point was looking intact, right? And here we saw the pop-up. I ended up not getting in on this entry, um, on this pop-up entry. We got the pullback from about 1307 down to about 1266. And I ended up building a little position here at $12. And I believe it was like nine, was it 90 cents? Or it might've been, it might've been here actually. I, yeah, I actually might've gotten in on this first little pump at $12 and 90 cents. We ended up selling off and I was pretty deep, not deep in the red, but I was down about 1.52% at this point, and we popped up. I noticed how at this point in time, you know, Drip was actually looking to make a descending pattern of lower highs here. The high at 1305, you know, the, uh, the, the, the lower high here at about 1288, and at this point, you know, I was down again on my position, and I was getting a bit frustrated with myself because I figured at this point, I'm an idiot, you know, drip is selling off here, drip is selling off, I, I just suffered a, a mean case of FOMO, it's up 30%, why am I hopping in right now, it's, it's overextended, all these things were going in my head, kind of making me frustrated, right, and then we started to sell off even more down to about 1275-ish, and at that point, I was down like I think it was like 2% if I'm if I'm uh, correct, a little bit less than 2%. And for those of you guys that don't know, you know, I'm more conservative. So if I'm taking a loss of like 2, 3, 4%, you know, sometimes I do take losses like that, but it does kind of frustrate me, you know, even when I take a loss, it just frustrates me, guys. I don't know how to explain it. it. It frustrates me no matter what type of loss I take, even though I know it's all part of the game. I'm just really just telling you how it is and really just being honest with you guys right now. So 
ended up uh, get, taking a little loss on Drape here. I kind of cut it a bit too early. And then literally, guys, this is the part that I'm sure a lot of you can relate. Right after that, it ended up flying up literally 5-6%. And I missed out on a ton of profit and that was the kicker at that point you know i was just really mad at myself because you know again i i get a bit frustrated every time that i lose a little bit of money that's just how i am you know i get a little bit frustrated and then to see the stock literally bounce up five percent right after i got out that makes it even worse guys for a lot of the time and i know i'm being a bit emotional it's part of the game though and uh you just gotta live with it, right? So I'm looking to bounce back from this. I guess you, I guess it's not really a mistake. It's more of, you know, one of those things that just happens. I don't, I, I don't know if it's a mistake, guys, but because I didn't really do anything wrong at this point because I did get out with about a two percent loss, which is where I do minimize or uh, take my losses typically at two percent. But I'm just frustrated that I lost money because I got out literally right before it popped, but. That's just how it is, guys, and it did frustrate me to the point where I just stopped trading for the day. I don't know why, guys. It's just how it is today. Kind of a frustrating day, but that's just honestly what ended up happening. Took a little bit of a loss today on Drip, and that's just it, guys. Let me know down below in the comment section, what did you end up trading? Have you been in this situation before? I'm sure a bunch of you guys have been in this situation, so... What am I doing, you know, in terms of stocks and ETFs heading to this next week? At this point, I'm waiting for a further market sell-off, and I'm looking to trade more of these inverse ETFs and these market ETFs that really do well in times of volatility and in times of the market sell-off. So I'm looking to trade ticker symbol TQQQ, and for all you guys that don't know, TQQQ is an inverse ETF that goes down when the markets are going down so it pretty much follows the nasdaq in particular and it just moves the way the nasdaq does so let's say we have a bounce back day this is one that i'm going to be trading on the flip side let's say we sell off right sqqq this is one that goes up when the markets are selling off in specific the nasdaq i'll be trading this if the markets are selling off and don't freak out guys they actually did do a um, reverse split. We can see from $10 up to $41. This happens sometimes, especially in these leveraged ETFs as they decay over time. They do these reverse splits. Don't freak out that it says 300% today. That would be crazy because if this moved 300%, that means the market was ugly, right? So that's kind of it, guys. I'm, I don't want to spend too much time on this video but that's pretty much it. So if you enjoyed this video, actually, wait, before we do end the video, if you want to talk or me to talk about a specific stock in Sunday or Monday's video, I don't know when I'm uploading that video quite yet because um, we do have Monday off, so I might push it to Monday. But if you guys want me to talk about a specific stock, drop a comment down below right now and I'll get to it in the next video video if you enjoyed this video feel free to hit that like button and if you're not yet subscribed to the channel hit that red button hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that i do make a video and be on the lookout for tomorrow's video it's actually coming out at 10 a.m eastern standard time talking about my experience in kind of the stock market how much money i started with and kind of how I built up my account, what I was doing a couple of years ago to build up the account. So go and, and, and be in touch uh, tomorrow for that video. It's actually premiered, so you could probably go yeah, see that on my channel right now and hit the notification bell so you know when it's coming out. And that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend. I hope you all did well today. I'll catch you all in tomorrow's video. Peace out.